My name's Jo Parker and I'm a civil engineer and I'm standing in the complex of Victorian Canal, also built by civil engineers. I'm going to talk to you about a development which made a dramatic impact on the health of London's population. And it wasn't the medical profession that made this difference, but civil engineers like me. At the start of the 19th century, London was overpopulated and ridden with slums. The infrastructure was totally inadequate. The River Thames had become polluted with sewage, rubbish and even dead animals. Because it was tidal, people thought the tidal would, tide would carry everything out to sea. But although it was drawn down river as, as the tide went out, it just all came back when the tide came in. Water companies had started laying pipes to supply residences with a direct water supply. However, they took their supply direct from the river with no treatment whatsoever. On top of these problems, the dreadful disease of cholera arrived in the UK in 1831. It spread around the country that year with further outbreaks in 1848, 1854, and 1867. The disease was greatly feared, and understandably, it was a horrible disease. It was thought that around 7,000 people died in the 1831 outbreak, with double that dying in the following one. About half the people who caught cholera died, and even if you survived, it was vicious and painful and debilitating. The 1854 outbreak was even worse. In fact, it was the worst that people had ever experienced and people fled their homes and the streets were filled with the stench of death. Cholera was spread through drinking contaminated water and with the state of the River Thames and other water supplies, it's not surprising that the outbreaks were so widespread. However, people at the time had no idea how cholera was spread and generally it was thought to be passed through a miasma which was carried through the air. At this time there was demand for clean water, not for health reasons, but because it tasted and looked better. And a civil engineer, James Simpson, proposed to the Lambeth Water Company that they draw cleaner water from upstairs of, upstream of Teddington Weir and then filter it using a revolutionary new invention of slow sand filtration, where water is filtered through specially constructed beds of sand which overlie beds of gravel and seashells. Building the waterworks, located at Seething Wells in Surbiton, was a massive undertaking with up to 800 people employed in construction, not just of the filter beds, but also the network of tunnels and pipes, plus pump houses and ancillary works, such as new wharfs, which allowed the barges that carried the coal, which was used to fuel the pumps, to tie up just by the waterworks. People came from far and wide, all across the country, to build the waterworks, which employed both skilled and unskilled labour. And it was a major factor in the development of Surbiton's economy. The new works was just completed at the time of the cholera outbreak of 1854, the really bad one. John Snow, a doctor, had already started to suspect that cholera might be spread through dirty water. And he compared the infection rates in households that took their water from the new water treatment works with the infection rates of households that took their water direct from the Thames. And through this, he was able to prove the link between cholera and infected water. The amazing thing is that much of the tunnels and the walls and the pump houses, as well as the innovative filter beds, still exist and offer a unique insight into the technology of the time. Today we all take clean water for granted, which is piped into our houses 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. 
But the even more amazing thing is that the very same technology invented by that civil engineer, James Simpson, is still used to treat London's water. The technology has been automated and updated to cope with modern contaminants, but the waterworks in West London, for instance at Hampton, Ashford Common and Kempton, and in North East London at Copper Mills, still use slow sand filtration. I'm so pleased to have chosen civil engineering as a career. I've designed and run water treatment plants, which continue to ensure that the UK delivers some of the highest quality water in the world. I've also used this technology overseas with mini versions of the slow sand filters contained in simple to construct metal containers, which provided clean water to clinics in Afghanistan. I know that my work keeps people healthy and can even save lives. If you're looking for a career, why not study civil engineering and do something amazing? Whether you want to work here in the UK or overseas, what you build may even be making a difference in 150 years time, just like that engineer, James Simpson. Cheers.